guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm picking up my story time following last episode where I left you off in quite the episode. Um, essentially, as a recap, there was a situation at home. I escaped home and then I went to my friend Haley's house where my friend Marie was also there. And I had a breakdown while trying really hard to compose myself and keep it together and I just couldn't and I never cry around my friends I cried one time around my friend Amy I cried once around my friend Amy in third grade during some bullying situation that was going on but in this episode I'm going to be talking all about a very juicy spicy love triangle and it gets really spicy with a lot of drama, so stay tuned for this episode. Let's get started. So I hang out with Marie and Haley for a while. They help calm me down. We start hanging out. We start relaxing and we're okay. My friend Marie called her mom freaking out, like kind of explaining a little bit of what I told her what happened. And she was in tears saying that she didn't know what to do. And she was looking for her mother's support in the situation. Their family knew a lot more what was, what was going on with my family. Also, they had friends in the neighborhood that we lived. And we were kind of like the talk of this, the neighborhood, to be honest, because I mean, let's be honest, you could hear the screaming matches. They called the cops on us quite a number of times. So it was quite obvious to everyone in the neighborhood what was going on and because they knew people in the neighborhood, things just got spread around. And basically my friend Marie and her family knew a lot of the situation that I was in at home. Marie ended up going home after it got towards like seven o'clock and Haley's father came home and he was kind of made aware of the situation and eventually he's like, you know, you can't stay the night here. You should probably call home and at least see what's up. And I ended up calling home and my dad answered. I was actually really scared because I really didn't want to hear my mom on the phone. And my dad answered and I felt really relieved when he did, but also I knew that that meant something was up. So my dad answered and he was like, yeah, mom's not home right now. Your mother's not home right now. So I was like, okay, I'm going to come home. And I felt a lot safer doing that. Honestly, I felt a lot safer coming home because my mother wasn't home. I walked home to a quiet house. Of course, it was a quiet house. My mother wasn't home. Literally, that's how it was. And I didn't know why my mother had left, but I went to my bedroom and I, I honestly... At night, I cried myself to sleep a lot because of the situation at home, because of how bad things were. And a lot of mornings, I would wake up with poofy eyes and I would have to use like cold spoons on my eyes to like deep poof my eyes, but I still like looked so like thick a lot of the mornings. So I would like at least put on mascara so I looked a little bit more awake because I would usually like have trouble sleeping. But I think I might have been like, Loki freaking out in my room like maybe crying maybe just like just I didn't know how, how things were gonna go from that day because that event was like kind of big and all of a sudden my mom barges into the house and she's screaming and yelling at my dad so I don't know what altercation took place between my dad and my mom after I left but I guess my father must have pissed off my mother somehow I don't know but she was like saying how she said she was gonna threaten to leave the house but she decided to come back because we would wouldn't be able to survive without her or something like that i i don't know i don't know but she was like just screaming and yelling and she was really pissed and but she seemed to be directing her anger towards my father so at least i didn't have to bear that burden which I mean, I feel bad for my dad because like literally he would just take it. Like he would just be on the couch and take it. He wouldn't even say anything. He would never talk back. So I mean, the situation that day was pretty awful, but again, I felt a lot more relaxed 
knowing that I was able to come home when my mom wasn't home and that she wasn't directing her anger towards me after she got home. At this time, it was in the fall, I believe. We were still in September or maybe early October, maybe late September, I don't completely remember, but basically it was just the start of the school year still and I was just still getting used to high school life. Again, I was getting really close to my friend Shannon. She introduced me to one of these boys that she was trying to get attention from. We're gonna name him Jesse. Now Jesse, I had actually met before, but he didn't remember me. So in eighth grade, towards the end of the year, I remember we were having some sort of an event, all of the eighth graders, we were like running some sort of event or something. And he, Jesse was there like as a volunteer along with one or two other people from that high school. And I remember my friend Jenny, did I call her Jenny? I think I called her Jenny. Um, my friend Jenny, who now goes to a different high school, I remember she was saying how, oh my god, he's so hot, and he, she would always try to hit on him while he was there volunteering, and he would just be like playing on his PSP. And I remember she was like trying to get his PSP, and he was like really trying not to let her have it. So that was Jesse, and that was the first time I'd met him, but he didn't remember me. But in the present moment, in ninth grade, in the fall, my friend Shannon was really trying to get attention from Jesse. And one day I remember her getting like all like bubbly and excited. And I guess he had asked her out and they had started dating. And I'm like, okay, cool. And so he started actually hanging out with all of us. So we actually started creating kind of like a group at this point. So it was me, it was Marie, it was Haley, Shannon, Jesse, and then eventually another guy joined the group and he was really close friends with Jesse. We're gonna call him Anthony. So Jesse and Anthony would hang out with us pretty much every single day during lunch. So in the lower level of the school, on one end, there was a staircase that was pretty private and we could literally go under the staircase and we would just hang out. And Jesse was just being really vulgar and yelling out weird and inappropriate things as people walked down the stairs. And it was kind of funny, like almost reacting to people like stepping on us. And then people would get down the stairs and they'd be like, who's yelling these things? Now, Shannon was weird because she wanted all of this attention from guys, but she didn't want to be alone with guys. I guess she didn't want the guys to like start trying to make moves on her even though she went through all of this trouble to get their attention so it didn't really make sense but essentially she would have me come along as pretty much a third wheel every single day after school with the two of them going to like the coffee shop hanging out around the neighborhood going and just talking and hanging out and whatever and it it was a little weird because like I knew I was the third person but Shannon really wanted me to be there like she made it very clear she wanted me there and she actually felt more awkward when I wasn't there because she didn't want to be left alone with him even though they were supposed to be like boyfriend and girlfriend actually at this time I really didn't like the guy I thought that the guy was very moody he was very temperamental he was kind of an asshole and I really didn't like him. Like, I didn't say anything. I wasn't that type of person to just outwardly say anything. But he was kind of a douchebag. And that's how I felt about him during this time. One time, we were sitting at the coffee shop together, Shannon, Jesse, and I, and I don't remember what prompted it. Maybe it was a similar interest that Jesse and I had. I don't know. Maybe we were talking about nightcore music or something. I don't remember. Maybe it was video games. But my friend Shannon just outwardly was just like, why don't you guys date together? Maybe you should date each other. And we just look at her awkwardly like, where'd that come from? Like neither of us were interested in the other person. We were just like, that was weird. I felt a little uncomfortable after that. It was just, it was weird. So around this time, Shannon and Jesse were actually having some issues in their relationship. Now again, like, I don't know why they were even a couple, to be honest, because Shannon never wanted to be alone with Jesse, and she didn't even seem too interested. Like, she seemed really interested in hooking up with him, and then after that, it was like, she'd do anything to get away from him, honestly, or like, not be alone with him. 
And so now I just need to mention something that some of you are going to think I'm crazy. Some of you are going to think that this is fascinating. I don't care. I'm going to tell it anyway. So I've mentioned before that I got really into Wicca and witchcraft in middle school. And this is kind of an escapism thing for me to get into magic and to just believe in magic and all of this stuff. So basically, around this time, I was so super into dreams and I was learning all about like astral projection and things like that and lucid dreaming and I really wanted to learn how to astral project and lucid dream and all of this stuff so I had a dream journal and I was routinely trying to remember my dreams and write them down and try to google the meanings of things like I was very fascinated about dreams and so one day, and it was still fall around this time, I had a dream that I was walking with my friend Shannon and Jesse, and then we got to this one intersection, and there was like a layer of snow on the, the ground, and it was actively snowing, and there was trees around us, and there was very specific house, like it was a very specific setup, and it was muted, there was no audio, I don't, I think it was relatively in black and white, but honestly it was so long ago, I don't remember. But I remember like feeling the vibe, but I didn't hear any audio. So I remember the vibe was very like calm and chill and all of a sudden it wasn't. And it was like a oh, serious moment. And basically in my dream, we all came to a standstill at this one spot in like an intersection. And my friend Shannon and my friend Jesse were standing and they, they were clearly having some sort of a moment. And it clearly wasn't going positively. And then Shan and I walked away one way and Jesse walked another way and parted ways and that was the dream. And I just remembered waking up, thinking of this dream, writing it down, and just being like, that had a weird feeling to it. It felt different. It felt almost like significant in a way. I don't know how else to explain it than that. So I wrote it down in my dream journal and I kind of just forgot about it. So going back to just school life, my friend Shannon and Jesse, they were actually in and out of relationship constantly. And you know, maybe my dream was just like, yeah, like they're just at it again with a breakup, right? And so I'm like, you know, it's not too weird for me to have dropped that because I kind of already experienced it, makes sense. But at this point in time, it was only like October and it hadn't started snowing yet. It wasn't yet getting towards winter season. Now around this time, we actually spent a lot of time going into the plaza and there was like after school, we would go, there was this hallway that was pretty much right behind the pizza shop and it was this really discreet hallway that we thought it would be a great place to just chill, to just sit there, chill and hang out and talk and whatever, have a good time. And we all did this. It was me again, me, Haley, Marie, Shannon, Jesse, and Anthony. And we pretty much did this routinely every single day after school. And I would literally be getting home as late as like 6.30, sometimes later. And my mom was throwing kissy fits every single time, of course. But you know, again, it was so crazy and chaotic at home, all of the domestic violence. I wanted to have this escapism from all of this domestic violence at home. So for me, like this was, this was, I needed this. Like this was the place I needed to be. I didn't want to be home, coming home to all the screaming and yelling. And then one day I was walking with my friend, Shannon and Jesse, and we were walking and it was snowing and we got towards this one intersection and they started talking kind of seriously like there was this tone and there was this vibe and all of a sudden they stopped walking and I just stopped and I was kind of just letting them have at it I'm not going to intervene in their relationship you have your moment and then the biggest deja vu hits me and I'm like this is weird I've seen this already and I also know what's gonna happen they're breaking up and they're not getting back together and as I'm having this deja vu moment I'm realizing that this dream that I had it was the exact same setup it was the act of snowing it was the snow on the floor it was the specific trees in the specific locations with the houses and this was like the specific intersection at the specific spot and I'm literally reliving this in real time it was 
bonkers. This is not the last time that I've had like a crazy dream that was like, okay, this has some sort of significance to it and I end up coming true. I don't know why I had this dream. It still blows my mind. And the weird thing too is that my mother told me that she had a dream when she was younger, but of course I didn't know whether to think like, she was going crazy or not. So essentially my mother had like eight older brothers and one of her brothers went missing one day and no one could find this brother and one day she had a dream that he was like sitting against a tree or something and then the police she tried to tell the police and the police thought that she was crazy and then the police ended up finding her brother buried under snow by a tree and so she claimed that she had had a psychic dream that she knew where her brother was and like i remember hearing the story but i was like you know what she might be crazy but then i have this dream and i'm like like that's kind of crazy but this is quite a turning point this is kind of like the first half of a love triangle so i'm going to leave this episode here and i'm gonna pick this episode up with the next episode and it gets spicier <laughs> so i'm gonna leave this here i hope you enjoyed this video Definitely give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe down below, turning on the notifications button. And I'll see you again for another episode really soon, all about my life. Bye for now. Till next time.